Welcome to a new episode of IDIY, where we do projects ourselves because we like saving money. And also, why would we pay somebody to do something we want to do ourselves? That doesn't make sense. So I just bought a new house, a new old house, 1979. It's older than my old one. Uh, and it's going to have a ton of projects. So make sure to hit subscribe right now uh, because we're going to be doing a ton of videos over the next few years as we renovate this house. So our first project came sooner than we wanted. Uh, but we knew it was coming because this house came with a furnace from 1993. Let me turn this camera around. And we knew this thing was going to be getting replaced uh, pretty quickly. And sure enough, we've been here for a month. We were laying in bed the other night and we could hear the blower motor inside there just whistling. And I thought, oh no, it's burning up. And my wife rolled over at 11 o'clock at night and said, oh my gosh, do you smell that? And I said, oh my gosh, I think it's on fire. So I ran downstairs with a fire extinguisher. Uh, and sure enough, this motor was smoking and it was blowing uh, smoke through all the air vents in the house. Uh, right as it shut down, I, I cut down here and it's just totally fried. So I could get a new blower motor for about 150 bucks and repair this thing. But like I said, it's from 1993. And the AC unit, I think, is just as old outside, and it is just time to get rid of this thing. So we're going to take this guy apart. We're going to go pick up a new one, and we're going to put it in. And then I got Jake coming over, buddy Jake, and he's going to he's an actual HVAC contractor. He's going to tell me everything I did wrong, make sure it's all fixed and operating properly. He's going to braze in the, uh, uh, the AC lines on the back and outside and make sure that we are running. All right, so I just rented the old U-Haul and ran down to a supply store and got some new equipment. Now, a couple notes about this equipment. So it's really hard to get your hands on this stuff if you're not an HVAC contractor. Uh, obviously, I'm not. I'm your DIY guy. Uh, but it's good to know people in high places. So I called Buddy Jake, who is a HVAC guy. He said, no problem. Uh, I'll order it up on my account. You just need to go pick it up as a customer. So you can't really go, go into Home Depot and buy one of these things. Uh, you can actually try to find a few on Amazon. Uh, but good luck making sure everything's sized correctly. So that's the next note, making sure everything's sized correctly. So if you've got a really old unit, it's probably gonna be uh, much bigger than what you currently need because this new stuff is so much more efficient. So if you have a 120 BTU furnace in your old house, you put a new 120 BTU furnace in, it's gonna be way too strong. And bigger is not always better with HVAC. So if it's too big, uh, your house is gonna heat up and cool down way too fast and it's not gonna be a nice even temperature, plus those motors are gonna be cycling on and off, on and off, on and off, as it cools down the house really fast, versus what you really want is something to kick on and run and circulate that air and then shut off and just cycle a few times every hour, uh, which really extends the life and uses the equipment the way it's so, supposed to be used. So to make sure it's sized correctly, you ne definitely need to do a, um, uh, what's it called, a load test on your house, uh, which would be a good way to do it. Probably a better way to do it is a static pressure test. Uh, it's just a calculation that you determine how much air you can actually physically push through your ductwork, and then you use that uh, to make sure you size your equipment properly, which is what we did. So what we got here, we got our new, we got our new AC unit for outside, our new furnace, a new coil, and then I got the back of the truck full of all sorts of other duct work and stuff that we're gonna be using as well. So let's get it in. All right, so here's the old dinosaur and we're getting ready to start disassembling it. This is the back side of the furnace and the AC on the inside. And before we start disassembling it, the first thing we need to do is make sure we get all of that old R22 refrigerant out of the line set right here and the evaporative co uh, coil that is sitting on top. Now, uh, in a perfect world, you would just have all the tools and the gauges and the pumps and you would just evacuate the system from outside, which we will do that when Jake gets here, when he hooks up the new AC. Uh, but for now, I need to make sure that I get all of that refrigerant out of the unit and there's a trick to do that so I can essentially pump down the system, which is going to suck any refrigerant that is stuck in this line and in the evaporative co uh, coil up and out and it's going to go outside into the uh, condensing unit outside and then we can just trap it in there and then we can disconnect everything and not worry about uh, leaking off that R22 refrigerant into the atmosphere, causing a hole in the ozone layer, all that good stuff. Make sure the EPA is nice and happy. Also, I don't really want to dump that stuff out inside my house. So I'm going to show you how to, it's called pumping down. We're going to go pump down the system from outside. All right, so I'm out here at the old AC dinosaur. 
and we're gonna pump the sucker down. So this is actually pretty simple. So I get the back open up and man, it is old and dirty in here. And you got, we got the two lines coming in. We got the low pressure, the big one, and the high pressure, the small one. So essentially what we're gonna do is I'm just going to pull off both of these caps and I've already loosened them up. These are just caps. Pull those off. And then inside there, I can put an Allen wrench in. And we're gonna spin this valve. We're gonna tighten this valve. And what that's gonna do is it's going to shut off. This is just a valve. So right now they're both open. We're gonna shut both of these guys off. And what that's gonna do is, the, or we're gonna shut not both of them. We're just gonna shut the uh, high pressure off. This will take a while. I'm gonna spin this valve until it stops spinning. And that means it's, it'll be closed. Okay, so now the valve on the high pressure side is closed, which means when this thing turns on, it's going to evacuate. It's going to suck all the refrigerant out of the low pressure side here. It's going to suck it back inside here, and it's going to hold it in its tank, which you can see down in there. A super old tank. Now we got less than 50 feet of line, which means there should be plenty of room inside that tank to hold any refrigerant that is stuck in this liner inside the house and it's gonna suck it all out of here and it can't put any more back in. It's gonna suck it all out and it's just gonna store it inside there. And you wanna make sure you use, you gotta push this button in here to turn it on. You don't gotta go inside. And uh, use an insulated handle because you don't wanna touch anything with any electronics on it. And then you're just gonna push this button and hold it down for a couple minutes. And there we go. Now it's running and it's sucking the whole system down. All right, so I just ran the unit, pushed that button, got this line shut, ran the unit for two minutes. And you should, if, if you've got the gauges, that'd be great. You put the gauges on and it tells you, you hook the gauges on in here and it tells you uh, the pressure and you know when it's at zero. Uh, I just ran it for two minutes, which is probably a minute longer than I need to. And I know that it's empty because this line here, the low pressure line, when I first turned it on, it got really cold because it filled up with refrigerant. And then after about 45 seconds, uh, it was no longer cold. And then by the end of the two minutes, the, the sun just beating on us was enough. Now this is totally warm, which tells me I got all the coolant out. There's no more coolant in here. So now the last thing I need to do is just take this Allen wrench and I'm gonna go in here uh, to the high pressure side, or sorry, the low pressure side right there. And I'm just gonna close that valve with my Allen wrench. And what that's gonna do is all that refrigerant is now sucked out of the line. It can't go out here and it can't go out here and it's all trapped inside here. So when Jake shows up, he can just evacuate this old system and we can dispose of it properly. All right, now that we're all pumped down and I know there's no more coolant in there, I'm gonna just cut this copper line and start disassembling this unit. So I'm just using a, a copper cutter, cutting wheel. I'm just gonna spin this around. Make sure you wear gloves because if you did happen to get anything on your skin, it would burn you, chemical burn. All right, I got that line cut right there. Now we're gonna cut the low, the low or the high pressure. All right, we're all disconnected outside. So now we can start doing the inside. So I'm gonna shut the power off to the furnace. I'm gonna kill the gas. Now those are both off. Now I can disconnect the old gas and electrical coming in and start disassembling the old duct work and we'll be able to halt this thing out of here. I'm gonna have to cut that AC line again on the back, but there's nothing in there now, so. Shouldn't be any problem. Guys, can you start helping me uh, cut the ductwork? You're eating popsicles because it's hot in here. Start disassembling it. Let's go, demo day. Yeah, I see you have lots of help in here. Good job, buddy. Hey, I love him down. Yeah? Yeah. Come, come tell me. Okay, power is disconnected, just like that. Whoa. Thermostat wires, disconnected, thermostats removed. Gas line. Gas pipe. Ice cream 
All right, the gas is disconnected, all the power is disconnected, the thermostat wires are disconnected. Now we just gotta remove all that duct work. There we go. Got all the duct work out, everything's gone. I cut the line set, it's already drained down from outside. Now we just need to push this old furnace out of the way, vacuum up the floor and start putting in the new one. All right, we got the old furnace out. I also took out part of this wall cause I'm planning to demo that later. Uh, but that's the furnace. You're looking at the back side of it. That's the uh, AC coil that's going to sit right on top. And then on the ground here, I bought this nice filter box. So this needs to get assembled. But basically, this is a sheet, bunch of sheet metal. Gets put together into a box. And a nice little door on the front of it. And that's where the filter will go. And the air will just flow into the AC from underneath. Uh, but from the floor to my trunk, I need enough height for the box, the furnace, and the AC, and I'm just short. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually cut six inches off the bottom of the filter box, or five inches, uh, before I put it together, and then it'll just be five inches shorter, and that'll give me all the height that I need. So we'll get moving on that. All right, we're back. Uh, sorry, I did a little bit of work without the camera rolling. I didn't do as much work as it looks like though. So basically I just finished assembling the filter box and then this furnace and the AC coil was just unboxed. I haven't really touched it. I just set it in place because I wanted to see my height. Now what I did work on when the camera wasn't rolling and I apologize was my intake and exhaust. Uh, and that just goes all the way outside Basically, this is just your standard plumbing work. You're just measuring and cutting pieces and gluing them together. Uh, so I've got my exhaust pipe here, my intake pipe here, and they go across the basement. And I'll go outside and show you what those look like. They go out right there uh, from the outside. But uh, I also did do the uh, return. I'm doing a new air return duct. Uh, this is just sitting here. It's not attached to anything. Uh, that's just a couple pieces that snap together. So I really need to do a whole lot. Um, what we still need to do here, I need to uh, knock out the bottom of the furnace for the air intake. I need to cut a hole in the side of the filter box and in the side of the air return so that the air can flow down through the return into the filter box and then up through the furnace properly. I wanted to get this all in here, mainly so I could see where the intake and exhaust needed to land. Uh, but also I knocked out some of this wall because I'm going to remove this at another date. I needed to see if I was going to have to move my gas line, which I don't. He's actually in a pretty good position right where he is right there. Um, and then my power coming into the furnace, I wanted to move him uh, to this wall. So those are the things we're going to work on next. And I'll go ahead and show you what I did outside as well. All right, so out here, I removed all the crap that they had on the outside of the house here and before i set the new ac i wanted to uh, regrade this area i had negative drainage up to the house from the old owner and i knew that if i set the ac on that new pad without doing it now i would never be able to regrade this part of the house so i just did it now this is just a uh, fabric i'm going to get a, a load of rock here once this is all done and then there this is a concentric air intake and exhaust so exhaust out the center intake is out through the back and that just really cleans it up so you don't have those pipes that come out of the house and candy cane back down all right so i'm going to rerun this electrical just to put a new switch and everything on uh, watch out there buddy 
Don't touch those wires. Um, okay, so basically I'm just gonna take this box. I'm gonna reroute the electrical. I'm gonna mount it on this wall. Here's what I got to hook it up. Real simple. I need a new conduit line. The exterior vinyl stuff was cheaper than the, the metal braided one, probably just because of the price of metal. So we're using an exterior line, just to save some money. Then we just got a heavy duty switch and a switch plate, and that's pretty much it. All right, I got my new power coming in. I moved it up to the top where I wanted. Power comes into the box, goes back out through this conduit, into the side of the furnace, and got all my wires. So now I just gotta hook them up. All right, next we need to run the gas pipe in through here, through here, and it just needs to come up and go 90. You have to hard pipe this. We can't run the flex line all the way in. So we're gonna have a hard pipe out and then a flex line connector. So to do that, I just got three pieces. What are you saying, buddy? What are you saying? A hard pipe. Yeah, we're gonna hard pipe it out. That's right. So we got a 90, we got a little nipple and a six inch piece. And that's just gonna come out right there. And there you go. One, two, three pieces of pipe. Super simple. Run the hard pipe out and then you can flex connect it to the gas line connection in your house. All right, so being very careful not to move the base, I actually outlined in a Sharpie the bottom of where my filter box and the air return were gonna sit. I actually ratchet strapped them together and then I very carefully removed the furnace and the AC coil. And now I can get in here and I can cut out the bottom side of the filter box to allow our airflow. So while these two are strapped together, I gave myself four dots in where my corners are gonna be. Kinda of hard to see on the camera. I'm, they're strapped together, so if I drill a hole all the way through the filter box, box and then into the air return, and I've got them perfectly lined up, then I'll know I'll have my corners uh, exactly where I want them to line up, and then I can just cut out the sides in between. All right, we got our hole cut through the side of our filter box into the return trunk. I got everything married together. I put some screws in there and then taped and sealed so I don't have any air gaps. I taped it on the inside and I also taped it on the outside. So we are ready to start stacking the furnace and the AC coil on top. And Jake should be here real soon and we can start getting everything hooked up. We gotta turn on the AC, hook up the power, turn on the gas, hook up the thermostat and we should be ready to rock and roll. All right, Jake's here, and he didn't, Snake. this is a surprise. He didn't know he was going to be doing a cameo on the YouTube channel. Nope. I don't <laughs> so, know what, what's YouTube? So, uh, Jake, I've done, I got the furnace in place. I got gas line hooked up. I brought in the electrical. I got the filter box, the um, he air return. Him, he shocked himself once. I only got, I got electrocuted once. I, I flipped the breaker after I got electrocuted. Lessons learned. Uh, Lick your by, fingers first. By doing all of this myself and then just having you come, mm -hmm. hook up the AC, charge it, and then make any adjustments that we need to the furnace. We're going to stack the unit and everything. How much money am I saving? Oh, easily 12 grand. 12 grand. Now, that's Jake's an expensive contractor. But I Very. would say uh, probably if you hired somebody out to do this, we're probably saving between mm -hmm. 7 and 12 grand. Mm -hmm. uh, the materials... We spent about six thousand dollars, and we because of the savings, we were able to get a really nice uh, two-stage furnace, nice AC unit. Jake mm -hmm. sized it all up for the house, uh, so let's get this bad boy hooked up. Sweet. All right, so Jake is bending the seven-eighths copper pipe. He's got what's that tool called, Jake? It's it's a tubing bender. Tubing bender. So that's how you get the nice yep. bends in there. If you try to bend that by hand, you will kink, kink it. So you need a tool for that. Saves on fittings. No nineties. So higher flow through the unit and no brace joints to worry about. All right, Jake, which, what is the cold, the big line and the small line? Which way does the, the coolant flow? You got it. So the compressor will take a heated vapor from rare. This goes into the compressor. From the house. From inside the house. So it's flowing from the house to the compressor in the, the big compressor line. The compressor is a vapor pump only. Okay. It will uh, pressurize that into the condenser, turning it back into a liquid. You've got a fan out here that brings outdoor air across it. 
as you take from vapor to liquid, it heats it. And it gets hotter than the outside air, transferring heat. And then that cooled liquid on the liquid line goes into the house, into the... But that line feels hot. But it's the hot line, correct. If you touch the line coming off the top of the compressor in here, and you measure the difference, you can't hold your hand on that line. That is all the heat from inside the house. Got and it. then when you touch this line, now you're like, oh, I can hold on to it. It'll be about 100 degrees, depending on the day. And then, so this cools off the refrigerant from inside the house based off the principle of heat goes to cold. Right? That's the world of thermodynamics. Hot goes to cold. And then what I'll do is I'll take that liquid line, I'll send it inside to the evap coil. You've got the indoor blower motor blowing the hot air from the house across it. Just like holding your hand down an aerosol can, it gets cold on the top. So that's the transition from liquid to a vapor. The change of state makes it very cold. I do that at a specific time inside and that hot air comes across from inside. I pick up heat from inside, right? And then I take that heat now on this cold heated vapor line <laughs> not confusing and I, at all and i take that that has picked up the heat from the house into the compressor heat it back up to get the heat out of it because i have to put make it hotter than the outside air. we continually do that process and this refrigerant is actually classed as a solvent um 14a boils at like negative 40 degrees don't quote me on that it's been a long time since i needed to know that um, R22 is the old stuff that boils at like negative 30. I might have those mixed up. Um, so it's a very interesting solvent. You know, class, but it's free on pretty much. And we continue to do that process with this fan constantly running, blower motor constantly running, compressor running. As we transfer heat, we pick it up from inside, making something cold, picking up the heat, taking it outside, making something hot to dispense the heat outside. There you go. So very, through a very complex way, this whole unit literally <laughs> takes the heat from inside the house and drops it outside. Yep. The hot line is your cooled line and the cold line is your heated line. <laughs> and that's all you need to know. <laughs> all right, Jake is getting ready to braise the lines. Let her rip, Jake. All right. That's not supposed to be there, up top there, fellas. <laughs> if you see that little flame, it is because I might need a new tip. So we want, it's all about the cone. So that right there is a little too spicy. So when he braises, the difference between this and sweating is basically heat. So this is oxyacetylene yeah. and it's going to get that pipe cherry red because we use a different alloy than when you're sweating copper pipe for like plumbing. And this allows it to withstand higher pressures uh, that you can't do when you just yep. sweat normal copper pipe. So if you do this on too high of the oxyacetylene mix and you get it too hot on the liquid line, the small line, you will blow a hole right through soft copper. So I'm putting a dab on. And it's getting cherry and red. And I'm pulling it through to the back of the fitting. I want that top of the fitting, the hottest part. Don't melt so my pan. So we'll put a dab on. You know, there's always a holes in pans everywhere. So we'll kind of get that again, pull the hit back in, get that bottom, and then you kind of come back and you have some fun, you put a little filet on it. It's an artwork. Uh-huh. You just kind of go back and forth on it. There you go. Do it again. These trades don't get enough uh, credit. So Jake's got um, wet towels on the valves to make sure that the heat doesn't go inside and melt the valves inside. You can use a cooling gel or a cooling putty. Top of the cone is the hottest part of the oxyacetylene there. And there's a little bit of gap because the way the line bent in, but Jake said it's not a problem to just fill the we'll, whole we'll gap. We'll fill up. it. Pull that heat back into the fitting. 
get that fluff, that braise back in there. Make sure when you're wrapping this around, you get to the old where you stop. So that way you know you got it all wrapped around. Pull it back in there. This is the RX-11 flush. We are toting it because the mineral and the POE oils, the new and the old, cannot mix. And also trapped in the oils is the old R-22. So as we dissolve the oil, get it out of there, when we pull vacuum, we'll be able to suck everything out of the refrigerant lines, essentially making them like outer space. Perfect. And we're doing that because we, we're using the old line set. So if we pulled a new line set, we wouldn't have to do that. But since we're using the old one, we got to get the R-22 out of it. Go ahead. All right. Pulling it out. So you just got a tank. What's in that tank? Nitrogen. Nit Nitrogen. Nit yeah. Pressure test, 350 PSI. I will be doing it today for 30 minutes. I do not have an hour tonight. As you can see, the sun is going down. This is on the side. This is for my buddy Pete. So. 30 is plenty, about 150. We have nights going down, temperatures going down. I do expect this to drop. So he's got all his hoses hooked up into the system. Comes into this fancy meter he's got. He's running nitrogen into it and checking pressures on the whole system. All right, Jake's getting ready to install the flexible ductwork that goes between the furnace and the return. It's really in case the, the floor would have settled because we're on concrete slab but mainly it helps with the vibration so you don't get vibration through the whole house. So while Jake's working on that, I got all these little plumbing fittings here, three quarter inch plumbing fittings, and I'm gonna work on the condensate line. So because this is high efficiency, the furnace will condensate water. It needs somewhere to drip. Also the AC condensates water, so it needs somewhere to drip. He comes off the back. So I'm gonna have drain line coming off the back and drain line coming off the front. So we're both gonna work on our own parts here and we're gonna have this thing up and running in no time. Correct, wait. All right, so Jake you. got the uh, boots hooked up on the top. I got the drain hooked up back here. I need another piece to hook up the secondary drain, but that drains to the drain behind the wall. And now Jake is hooking up the thermostat wires. We, we just connected the power. That's pretty simple, ground to ground, white to white, black to black. Put the cover back on. Jake's gonna put the thermostat wires in. You can follow a manual to know which one goes to which, but Jake already just knows which one goes where. So this is thermostat to furnace, and then furnace bar to AC, and that should hook it all up. All right, power's hooked up, thermostat's hooked up. Jake just flipped the switch, moment of truth. We're gonna push the button. Put the button is pressed. And- We've got power. We got power, baby. Tick, tick. Let's see what happens. Yeah, the, the thermostat, it's that Ecobee and it's got to calibrate so it takes a minute. Mm -hmm. That little beast, but I'm not going to let it go too much further because I want to put the door on now. Okay. So I'm gonna... Sweet, so we got AC in the house, which is super nice. The last thing I do is to hook up the gas line. Now I just got this little shorty. I returned the four foot one at Home Depot. We got this shorty flex connector. It's going to go somewhere in here like this. Hook up the gas in the house to the furnace. I'll make sure to do some uh, thread sealant on the connections, and then when it's all done, we'll go back over with the leak detector and make sure I don't have any gas leaks. All right, there's our flex line all nice and connected in there. I got the gas turned on. I don't smell anything, that's a good sign. And then we just take the, the leak detector here, and we just kind of dab this on to all of our connections. And if we see bubbles, then we know we got a leak. Hopefully, we don't have any bubbles. Dab a dab a dab. Now I only do the uh, thread sealer on the black iron and black iron to the flex connector. The the other connectors work just on compression fitting, so you don't do the the uh, pipe sealer on those. So we just dab everything up, real good. Don't be afraid to make a mess of this stuff. And we'll go back to the old stuff and make sure we didn't jostle anything. I got no bubbles. That's a good sign. I don't see anything bubbling up in here, which tells me I shouldn't have any gas leaks. 
I check all of my connections and I think we're good to go. Let's fire up this furnace and see how she runs. All right, I just flipped the thermostat to heat. We should see these jets power up any second here once it tells the furnace it's go time. All right, here she goes. We just heard a kick on, the blower's on. Let's see if we got heat. There you go, working furnace, I saved seven to twelve thousand dollars doing my own furnace and AC. Heck yeah. All right, there she is. Furnace is totally done and installed. Furnace and AC, we're running like a charm, super happy, and I saved a boatload of money doing this my project myself. Now, a handful of takeaways, some things that I learned. Uh, so first off, would be intake and exhaust. That's these two lines right here. I got my intake and my exhaust. A couple things on these. Even if you're not doing this yourself, you should check that your HVAC contractor is doing this right, because believe it or not, I've had friends install furnaces with a contractor and they use the wrong size pipe. So I was able to get away with a two inch pipe and I know this and I didn't want to do a three inch pipe because it's a bigger hole in the wall on the exterior and I had to go through brick. Now I know I was okay with two inch pipe because you have to consult the, ma the manual for your furnace. So you're gonna look up, it's gonna tell you exactly how far you can go. And you look up your furnace size, the size of your pipe, how many elbows you have, and then that tells you how far you can go. And you have to count the elbows on the exterior of the house if you're gonna do, uh, I have a concentric intake and exhaust on the outside of the house, so there's no elbows, but if you have one where the, the contractor wants to candy cane them up and out of the house and take an exhaust, you have to count those elbows too. Now I have 25 feet of pipe and the manual told me that I could do up to 30 feet with my four elbows. Uh, so I'm just exactly where I need to be there, a little bit short, so I'm good. Uh, but make sure that your contractor does this right, because if they use a two inch pipe and they go 40 feet with four elbows, your furnace is gonna choke. It's not gonna get enough intake. It's not gonna be able to, able to push the exhaust. So that was that takeaway. Then there was this. This I added in later. This is an optional drain. It was in the manual, but I thought it was a really good idea. So this is my intake line. Air uh, fresh air comes in from the outside and goes into the furnace. Now I've got slope downhill the whole way as this goes all the way out the side of my house. Now, if I ever get water, in this line, it's gonna drip down that slope and all the way into the furnace and rust out my furnace. So I went ahead and I cut this in. This is just a two inch to three quarter inch PVC T. And then I just tied this T into my drain line here. This was just kind of something fancy because I had an extra one and I thought, ooh, that bend will look pretty going around there. Uh, most HVAC people will probably laugh at me because I did that, but I thought it looked good. So I did it. That's a running trap. Um, now, because I've got drainage on the intake and I tied it into, this is the condensate exhaust for the furnace, which goes to my floor drain over there. Uh, I could have the furnace sucking air in here and it would draw air up from the drain line, which I really don't want it to do. I want the, all the intake to come from outside. Um, so I went ahead and I put a P-trap in line here on my drain. So here's where it ties in, comes out of the furnace, condensate drain, P-trap. And I was thinking ahead, so I gave myself a little clean out there because these do get clogged every few years. So I can just open up that cap and I can unclog it. And that drains down to the, the drain in the floor right there. Uh, next thing uh, that was interesting. So this is my filter box. And if you remember, I cut this guy down because I needed, I needed to get some height because my furnace was gonna be too tall. So I had to cut a few inches off the bottom. Now what I was worried about, because then you, you cut the hole in it. So there's my filter up top. There's the hole coming from the air return over there. And I needed to make sure that I would have enough 
a big enough opening to get enough airflow for this furnace so I wouldn't damage it. I couldn't find anything in the manual talking about how big I needed, only how big the filter cutout needed to be. But what I did find uh, was just some general advice uh, from the building code that said that you need, I believe, two cubic inches of cutout for every hundred for every thousand BTUs of furnace. So this is a hundred thousand BTU furnace. So I needed a two, uh, 200 cubic inch opening and I ended up with 220 even after cutting down my box. So I'm just barely there as well. Preferably I'd like that opening to be a little bigger, uh, but I ended up uh, being able to get as big of a hole as I needed. And so far everything's been running great and haven't had any issues with that. Now the last thing that I thought was really interesting, I wasn't aware of this, the furnace actually needs to be, let me scoot back here. It's kind of hard to tell. The furnace has to have a tilt on it. If you install it perfectly level, you'll end up getting water stuck inside in the condensate pump. So this is the condensate drain line coming out and he comes up inside here to the condensate pump and you want that water to always drain out. So they want you to put a slight bit of tilt on it. So I shimmed up the back here now that's a big shim, that's a three quarter inch piece of wood. You don't need that big. The reason I needed that big is actually because my floor was not level. I've got a, a crack uh, in the concrete right here and it was actually slightly heaved. So I needed to raise it up a half an inch just to get it level. So I went three quarters of an inch, which gave me just a slight tilt forward on my furnace to make sure that the water was always draining out. However, now that the furnace is draining this way, if I just set my AC, uh, coil on top of that. He wants to be level or tipped back the opposite way so that it can drain out the back. So I ended up shimming the furnace forward and you can't see because there's a bunch of tape on here, but then I shimmed the AC coil up and got him back to level. So furnace is leaning forward, condensate unit is level. Level is okay for the condensate because inside he's already designed with a little bit of slope uh, to the back so that it always drains. So that's what I learned. If you liked this, please hit the subscribe button, make sure to like it, and we will have a ton more DIY projects coming up with our new house here. Thanks for watching.